Hi. I thought I, I, thought I would do a couple examples of um, cumulative distribution functions. These are usually the, the tougher uh, topic in Chapter 4, just because people aren't used to thinking of a, a cumulative function. You usually uh, think of a function as you know, the probability that x is equal to some value, not the probability you know, that you're uh, less than or equal to some value. So this capital F function is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x. So when I put a value in him for x, I'm trying to find the probability up to and including that value. So for example, um, here's a range right here. So for x is between 2 up to but not including 4, the prob probability that's been accumulated is 1 fourth. So if I take a value in, in that range, let's just say x is equal to 3, um, the statement then, capital F of 3, is the probability that the random variable x takes on a value less than or equal to 3. And if I look, you know, 3 is in this range, and the amount of probability up to and including 3 is a quarter. So same for any of these. If you take a value in the range, you're just putting in the statement, capital F of x, whatever that is, and finding the probability up to that point. So um, let's look at capital F of 4. Now 4 is actually defined in this next range, um, and so the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to 4 is um, a half. So you can see the difference here. Somewhere between 3 and 4, I actually picked up some probability, and in fact I picked it up exactly at 4 because that's where I made my jump. So um, I thought first, maybe I'll just draw a graph of this guy, of capital F, uh, and then we'll go from capital F and determine its probability mass function. So I want to keep that picture in there. Here is, let me draw an axis here. Uh, eventually, capital F, it'll pick up all the probability and it will end at 1. So um, x's go from 2 to 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3. It picks up probability at 2, 4, 5, and 7. Um, this is the axis, x-axis, and this is capital F of x. And let me see, we'll put in here point one, two, three, four, five, so 50%, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1, all the probability. Okay, so this is capital F of X, the probability axis. So I'm going to change colors here um, when I draw my graph. So let's go ahead and draw uh, capital F of X. So for X is less than 2, I don't have any probability at all. So for example, if you took the value 1, um, the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, because 1 is in this range, is 0. I have not picked up any probability up, into the, up until the left of 2. So let me go ahead and draw what that looks like. So any value here for x less than 2, there's no probability. And even at 2, um, I don't actually get probability till I hit the value. So coming from the left, I have not picked up any probability. Now at 2, you can see I've made a jump from 0 to a quarter. But I don't actually take on that value till I hit 2. So at 2, um, the value actually defined at a quarter because that's how much mass I have there at 2. Going from, um, right, from the left of 2 to the right of 2, I just picked up some probability there at a fourth. So this is 0.25. And between um, 2 and 4, I don't pick up any more probability. So I have a closed circle. And up until 4, I'm just riding along that line. Any value in there, the probability, for example, less than or equal to 3 is a quarter because I haven't picked up any more mass. So at 4, you can see I made a jump then to a half. So at 4, we jump up here to a half. And nothing changes until 5. So I have uh, just a horizontal line till 5. Uh, open circle at 5 because I don't pick up mass until I actually hit 5, and then I can make my jump. Um, okay, so from 4 to 5, um, I was at a half. From 5 to 7, I go up to 0.8. So I make a jump here up to 0.8 between 5 and 7. 
open circle at seven, and then at seven I get my last bit of probability. I jump from, um, at seven I jump up to one. So I'm at point eight and I jump up to one. So I make a jump of point two, right? And there, there it is. So, I mean, interesting about capital F of X, uh, the right hand limit will eventually be one, right? I mean, eventually you're gonna pick up all your probability as you go along X. As X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're accumulating more mass till eventually you hit it all. Um, capital F is always non-decreasing, meaning it's increasing, but we say non-decreasing because sometimes it's just flat. So it's always rising or staying flat. Um, and the left-hand limit, it's going to negative infinity. So this is what a typical um, capital F graph looks like. And you can see here where it's making the jumps. Um, that's where uh, my mass function is defined. So let's go to um, let's go to green. So right here at two, this is going to be my mass function. At two, I picked up a quarter probability. At four, I picked up a quarter. Um, at five, let me see, we picked up 0.3. And at 7, we picked up 0.2. So the probability mass function is written like this. And the mass function is just the probability that x equals the value little x. So it's not how much area is up to x now. It's how much uh, area or probability is exactly at x. So um, this is defined for 2, uh, 4, and 5, and 7. So if I go over my graph, or even here, you can see at 2, I picked up the difference between 0 and a quarter, which is uh, 0.25. And then the difference between a quarter and a half is 0.25. Um, the difference between a half and 0.8 is 0.3. And the difference between 0.8 and 1 is 0.2. Um, I can make sure this is right. This has to uh, add up to 1, right? And it does. So it's a valid mass function. And uh, I, I think that's, that's the main point. So this, uh, this example then was going from a cumulative, which we call a CDF, to your probability mass function. So PMF, or later we'll call it PDF. So you're going from capital F to little f. Well, in this chapter we're calling it little p, but Imagine it's just a function, little f. You can call it anything you want. So um, I hope this is helpful, but I'm going to do a few other examples looking at CDFs, um, a couple different styles of problems, but I hope this one gets you started, and we'll talk about more soon. So um, keep current, and don't show me this message again, so hopefully this won't appear in other videos. Okay, talk to you soon.